What's up, baking monkeys? Welcome back to episode four of the Secret Streamer Bakery podcast. I thought it was episode five. What? I th- it's not episode three. It's episode four. This is the fourth no, recording. No, this is this is the fifth episode. What are you talking about? We've only recorded four. Wait. This is this is the fourth one. We've only recorded three. Yeah, no, so it's the third is, episode. This, no, we've recorded yeah. four. This is the fifth. No, you're outnumbered, Jacob. What? No, it's the fifth. Episode. No, Jacob's not outnumbered. He is the highest number. Yeah. What are you talking about? One isn't higher than two. No, my number is five. We're on episode five. Guys, why do they call it an oven if you ov in the hot <laughs> food, but you? I mean, I know. I mean, you ov in the cold food, but uh, you no. Wait, wait, wait. Why do they call it an oven? If you, uh, if you of in, no, if the cold food is of in, but then the hot no, food no, no. of, you of out the hot food. Okay. Well, yeah. That, that's the yeah. final take. You got that? Yeah. So I actually don't um, know about the entomology. Is it entomology or etymology? Damn. I'm Googling it right now just to double check that. Yeah. I don't know about the etymology or... Yeah, I don't know about the etymology of the uh, the word oven, but mm-hmm. I mean, I can Google it if we want. That's because it only sounds like of in, but it's the of n. So I don't know exactly what it's supposed to mean. Like. Mm-hmm. Is oh, unreal. Is there an oven that can like that has Twitter or something? Is there a smart oven? I'm Probably sure that's been there. smart fridges. Yeah, I only see smart fridges though. I never see people it's... like I'm tweeting from my Samsung oven. Bro, I wish. Bro, actually, wait, that'd be fire. Imagine there's an oven that takes pictures of your uh, like cake made baking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your made baking food. That'd be so cool. <gasps> wait, that would be so good for the actual streamer bakery. Yeah. Just drop like five k on a smart oven that does that. <laughs> it's a recording software. Well, I mean, it would take pictures. I mean, you could probably put a camera in. It has like an HDMI cable. You hook hook it up. Oh wait, no. Yeah. uh... Right. Yeah, the main problem is to worry about like what happens whenever you burn the um uh, camera or whatnot from baking. Well, it's presumably like behind some type of glass. Although I guess that's not a very resistant i don't hmm Th- there's definitely a way to do it and like make it not bad but i'd leave that up to the uh, like brilliant people that design things such as uh the transportation drones the transportation drones are a terrible idea mm-hmm. i disagree in fact i'm on record as saying they're great What's wrong with the transportation drones? I don't want to have this idea again. This 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 talk again. Liam, what's your opinion on like a smart oven that could like <clears throat> stream? You know, whenever I'm baking, all I'm able to do is just sit there and watch everything bake, and I can't do anything else except for watch it. So it'd be really convenient to have something like right there in front of me to just. Uh, watch while I watch my baked goods because as a member of the streamer bakery I bake a lot That's it's true. in it's in the job description mm-hmm. so yeah yeah I love that you know all baking heads here that's true and speaking of baking heads uh I think two weeks ago uh the baking gang the streamer bakery we went out and we saw the Mario movie together <laughs> the mario movie that, that was crazy that was a good good movie yeah so what's your opinions um, yeah go ahead jacob i i mean mario movie spoilers potentially i don't know if what i'm not sure if i'm going to say something on accident no no yeah uh, let's uh, warning right here mario movie spoilers uh oh no i mean, <laughs> I mean as as like mentioned the pacing is not that great <laughs> it, it moves pretty fast but i mean 
the humor and like some of the the animation is just on point yeah that's the main parts of it i uh talked about that in like another some other video content that i have done that mm -hmm. yeah that no the animation was phenomenal like i've never seen it. it's like the uh what's like a, a game with crazy animated graphics or crazy graphics like fortnite no not like an actual it's like you know like those games that are like oh this is just a tech demo for the system mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. uh it wouldn't be call of duty um or like it, it's kind of like uh is detroit become human like one of those examples i can't think of like a super cutting edge game right now but Skyrim yeah. remastered? No. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the water physics on it though? No, but have they updated it slightly have, to like look more waterly? Have you seen the Mario movie water physics though? That shit was phenomenal. Like the Rainbow yeah. Road scene, where chunks of Rainbow Road are in the water. Like I've never seen water like that. That was pretty cool, and that was followed by the best scene in the movie, where Mario That's and so Donkey true. Kong are having like a heart to heart. And they're talking about their dad issues. And Donkey Kong's all like, oh, my dad hates me. And he's being emotionally vulnerable to Mario, right? Mm -hmm. And then Mario's like, oh, well, I'm going to be the good guy because of course he is. God, I hate him. Uh, and he's all like, oh, well, I have dad issues too. He thinks I'm a failure. And Donkey Kong's like, and he's right. And that was the best part. <laughs> Your dad's a brilliant man. That was a really, that was, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting like the cop out. You're right. Maybe we're not so different. No, but I'm glad they stuck with the guns there. Like, yeah. Jacob, you complained about the pacing. I was actually a big fan of the pacing. Like, I was, really? I was worried. I'm not here for like a plot. It's a Mario movie. Fair enough. Like, what's the biggest Mario plot? Not counting the RPGs, like Mario Odyssey, maybe Mario Sunshine. But uh -huh. even then, it's like Bowser Jr. steals Peach because he wants a mommy. That's literally the plot. Like, I think. It was good here. I think it was more about the characters, the references, and just showcasing the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what would you like? What yeah. would you rate the movie overall? Like both of you. Uh, eight out of ten. I'd give it more of like an eight out of eleven. Okay, okay. So a little worse. I, I'm, I think I'm right with Jacob. I think I'd rate it an eight out of ten movie. Like, it, it was nice hearing like the Mario music. I can't believe they put Bowser in a jar, though. That's, yep, I had that on my notes. So I wanted to talk about that. Well, I'm going to get back to the music in a minute. The Bowser in the jar scene was so funny. <laughs> I remember in the theater, our group busted out laughing and nobody else did. <laughs> yeah. They just didn't get it. They didn't get it. And they, it's honestly Oh my god, it's it that was horrifying. Like, they, 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 they literally pulled out a fucking mason jar and just stuck him yeah. in. Especially when Luigi's the one that did that. Oh, well, they're masons. No. Why wouldn't they have a mason jar? <laughs> but like Luigi's the one that did that, especially with the Bowser twirling his mustache scene earlier, oh. and like Twitter <laughs> went crazy over that. Yeah, um, yeah. Twitter, Twitter thinks of some wacky yeah, things with the, uh, Luigi and Bowser, especially with the with a bloody jar they stuck him in. Yeah, I think I saw something with Bowser and Luigi, and I redeleted Twitter. I'm glad I don't have Twitter. What? Yeah, no, that's honestly based of you. I don't have it either. Uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah, double based. What? I know, like, your only interaction with Twitter is, like, a gimmick account, Liam. True. That I, was a funny gimmick account yeah, for it's the funny. Two seconds I was doing that. And, and when you re-mentioned it the other day about, like, how when you do look at Twitter, you just, like, browse on that, it's like, Wait, you have you funny. had a gimmick account? Yeah. Really? Well, gimmick, like... It, it was it was kind of like uh do you guys remember when alfred and joe sniffy made like a fake smash clan yes it's kind of that. like that that might have been it, that might have been the subconscious inspiration like i, I never i was. forgot about that like two seconds after i heard of the bit but it affected me yeah. like deep down i forgot about that and then they mentioned it again in a video recently but that <laughs> Like I, I think they were around the same time period, time frame. Uh, well, I want to talk about the movie because 
I know I one of our friends, me and Zane, we have like the same opinions. I think all the music they used was great, like song choice wise. Oh yeah, the music was really good. They had like it, a great diversity. Go ahead. Especially with like Jack Black. Jack Black as Bowser was the best part of the all, all of the custom songs were good. Yeah. I I liked I, the music choices they made for like the songs. Like they mm -hmm. took, they didn't just pull like a Sonic movie and only use the Green Hill, like the Mario theme once. They took like all music from everywhere. I think somebody said they took music from like, oh, what was it? They took music the, from some really obscure source or pretty bro, obscure. The DK, I was like, I was, I was hoping, but was not expecting the DK rap to, to come in. That was, and when, that they, was... And when they pulled that out, that was like a, a really good moment. I can't believe that was following them playing Take On Me yeah no that's a huge yeah. thing i think all of those they missed yeah i think all of their like you know third party like 80s rock music they all missed and i hated them all i didn't like any of them especially take on me in the mario kart part that didn't make sense i yeah it felt so tonally dissonant but i think uh like they managed to get like a lot of like popular songs, but they just didn't fit the um uh, the scene that they were in, as well as like using like a Mario movie, one, Mario game one, whatever. Mm -hmm. Which it's pretty. Uh, I th I I feel like also the orchestration and arrangement. I've uh, I've talked about this somewhere on the internet before, but I think that the orchestration of the music itself was not very good they tried to put it in a style that didn't fit it's like you know mm -hmm. the very generic like big picture hollywood movie sounds i feel like they tried mm -hmm. too yeah. hard for that and they ruined kind of like the mario-ness of it because some of the songs they did work but others they like they remove the playfulness i think uh when they first enter the mushroom kingdom and mario sees all the toads i'm like the music feels just a little off it's like I, it mm -hmm. might be my background in like a lot of music and looking at arrangements, but it was just enough. So it's not like it it doesn't overall hurt my experience in the movie, but it's like an uncanny valley where I have something mm -hmm. that I don't like about it. I know a lot of people really liked the music, but not me. Yeah. Um, I can totally see that. Yeah. My biggest gripe with the movie is my favorite Mario character ever is funky kong and he was in the movie mm -hmm. but like he didn't have the sunglasses sort of Wait, he, he didn't have the funkiness like it, I, i'm pretty sure funky guy i mean funky kong was like the first kong you see that opens what? its door oh, wait that was funky kong no that's I not funky think kong. so that's uh, not funky kong are you sure door. yeah funky kong has a bandana on and he's not like a, a is he not even in the funky. movie no he's in the movie he's just like a cameo like in the back Oh, you know yeah. when they're do like the the whole like Donkey Kong cart scene where they're all like forming up in like the mm -hmm. line, he's like in the back, just chilling out. Uh, well, I'm, I'm honestly he should have been the main character. I, I he would have he would have given like an energy to the film. Yeah, I agree. A lot of the things I've seen as well. Uh, Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong was kind of a miss. He just like a lot of writing wise, it didn't feel like Cranky Kong. They're not the same guys. Like he was kind of like like a kooky uncle rather than like the cranky grandpa yeah mm -hmm. yeah i totally agree um yeah uh i i think in the dk rap part they actually have chunky in the background somewhere really yeah they did i did i did see that that was funny i was i think chunky. i was who was i sitting next to was it simon and I don't remember. I remember Simon. I remember Simon because I made comments to him the most. I think he said, Chunky's not dead. <laughs> or was that Fern that said that? Somebody said that and it made me laugh. So true. Yeah. Okay. Chunky's I, dead. I have, I have a bone to pick with Illumination and Nintendo. They didn't credit Grant Kirkhope, Kirk Hope, the composer of the DK rap, uh, in the DK rap, they just put like Nintendo or 
like the team or something really generic or they just didn't credit anybody as a composer but then mm -hmm. koji kondo the goat is credited like every song which i, th I they should have credited i think they just didn't do the research and didn't look they're like oh we got the rights for this so let's go yeah oh yeah I it's a that. small thing i just think it's dumb yeah that's that's rather annoying yeah it was a good song it was uh jacob it's been a mm -hmm. while since we checked in on you. How's bowling been? Bowling's been great. Uh, I, I started to, to spin the bowling ball. Wait, you got the spin? You got the spin yeah. down? Yeah, I, I got the spin. Oh, Like baby yeah. lights? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, I let it rip all the time, including oh, my spinal column. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, like, no, seriously. Like, when I, when I be bowling, I be bowling. Oh, shit. Like I, I have consistently like, I, like, all of my games, never below one hundred so Damn. far. What's your? It's do like, you know what your a, average is right now? It's around like one twelve, one sixteen. Okay. Pretty good for saying. Yeah, starting like, out. I really started bowling like oh, like a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm improving at a rapid pace. That's better than the last times I bowled for two games, but I got sixty. If I were an egg, I'd the say the most recent excellent. time I went there, um, uh, I had like um, uh, I had two like one thirty games. Ooh, damn! And like the when I went bowling a week before that, I had a one fifty one as my highest. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, you're getting up there. Doing I aren't you planning on going bowling tomorrow? Sorry to talk. Oh, I'm going. Yeah, no, tomorrow is my normal bowling day. We okay. go bowling bowling at nine. Uh, could you well, say the location, time. latitude, and longitude, please? No, okay. I'm not an idiot. Yeah, I remember last time you guys kept doxing yourselves, and I had to cut all your audio. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, I know you've been like, yeah, doing bowling, and that's good. It's good to have hobbies. I wish I had more hobbies, but I have school. School is my hobby and job, basically. Man. Uh, speak, uh, Liam, do you have anything you want to talk about, or do you ever have like a moment where you're like going around and then you just suddenly remember you have free will? Uh, not like like what do you mean? Because I have like vague similar ish things. So like so like I was walking down the I, I was like walking down the street. Which one? Uh, my street. Okay. Yeah. And and I was going, and I looked to the right, and I saw a building, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wonder what's in there. And I was like, well, I guess I I won't I won't ever be able to know. And then I stopped myself. You know, I was like, wait, why not? Why why won't I ever be able to? You know. Mm -hmm. And I, I real I realized that I could totally just decide to go into that building. Like that—that that was possible. That was not something I would ever do because why would I? So then I—I I went into the building, you know, and I was like, and I was in the building. I'm not—I'm not explaining this well, but it—it's just like you—you you get into like, just like a groove in life. Like you kind of start doing, just things. And you can, it's easy to forget that you can kind of do anything, that you don't have to just do whatever you're doing. You don't have to go on this continuous cycle. You can just, you can do anything. You free will, you know? Or like, mm -hmm. like you're, you're at your favorite restaurant and you're about to get what you always get, you know? And you're like, oh, I'll never know what these other meals taste like. But it's like, why not? Why is that not an option? You're a person with free will. I see what you or mean. Or like uh -huh. when you're at a clothes store and you see a t-shirt and you're like, well, I'd never wear that. It feels like you have free will, you know, but, but you're limited by your actions and what you would feasibly do in life. That, that, that's kind of what I mean. Like, like, it feels like you're always limited to what I can I do, I what you can do, like, right. invisibly. It just sounds like matter like of opinion on what someone wants to do or not. No. No, I it's I so I think that's a difference in perspective. So I know some people that are like that and they've had that 
whenever I'm at a restaurant and I'm debating between the thing that I always get or like other oh, things, it's not that I like, oh, I don't need to, I choose the thing I want. I actively like look over the menu and think about it. Like, it's not mm -hmm. just a, oh, I will do this. Like, I don't get that t-shirt because I don't like that t-shirt. Uh, sometimes it is like, I don't know. Yeah, I, that, 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 that's what I'm trying to say. Like that, that's like my way of seeing it. Yeah, that's your way. But I do like some people have a different perspective and it's like, I just didn't think about that, but I have the ability to think about that and choose. That's kind of what yeah, you're saying, that's, right? That's exactly what I mean. That yeah. is exactly what I mean. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I don't like, yeah, I think I, I'm a very analytical person. So I, I just do that really passively for a lot of decisions, but like, I do think more of like the, holy shit do we have free will or like i guess we kind of do because like right now i could just leave my room and go commit a crime which not based don't do that but like the only thing that's stopping me is like my one like laws and the repercussions two my morals and three my desire to do anything but like in theory the only thing we're really bounded by is like circumstances and the laws of reality mm-hmm like I know some people, they'd probably go crazy if like literally anything was possible. Like Matthew, I, I, I know, I know quite a quite a person who would go. Yeah, it's Matthew. Who'd be crazy? Oh, I was I was talking about Danny. No, I we know a lot of crazy people. Danny's boring. I think Matthew would like <laughs> would just break the bounds of imagination. I yeah. It, for me, Danny's a predictable crazy. I have like a good idea of like the things he'll do and like say for me, mm -hmm. Matthew is like, I know he's going to do something, but what is it? Yeah. Ex and yeah, what's no, it about? Yeah. And I'm usually wrong. And that Matthew's my favorite person. He's the most interesting person I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. His, his, his ideas go off the wall, like 27% of the time. I mean, 24 seven. He was making a D and D character for uh, my campaign potentially. Uh, I still need to talk to him about that, but I don't have a session done. We're very, very close. I need to finish an asset, and then I think we're done. But I'm gonna wait until school's over because this next I'm busy. But the character concept he proposed, I it was the most absurd concept for like a character, and I would have allowed it but he didn't want to play it for some like in my opinion vague arbitrary reason that didn't fit it like it was just like it barely didn't fit what he wanted which to me like i would do it but that's like he only did something because he didn't want to not because you didn't allow it yeah or i didn't allow it in the very very specific way that like to me it would be a minor thing but to him it was very integral to who the character is <laughs> and it's not like anything like it's the most absurd character like think of I like can't, imagine can't some wait. person who like put three gnomes in a trench coat and didn't give any indication like yeah this I, was I, a thousand times more absurd i i i cannot imagine i wouldn't believe it and i promise i don't believe it but like i want to use the concept that he gave me so badly because it's so creative really? yeah i and i pl probably will at some point i had some no i was watching elden ring stuff and i realized oh i took a lot of inspiration for elden ring right. for my campaign world There's so many people mm -hmm. And then I also realized I took inspiration from Brandon Sanderson as well. And I just realized so many things. I'm like, oh, I'm touching on like both of these concepts. I mean, I did it. Brandon Sanderson help with the world of Elden Ring or was that? No, that's author? Robert Jordan, a uh, Game of Thrones okay. author, which Game, I mean, I, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I said the wrong name. I would have been crucified if anybody actually watches. It was George R.R. R. Martin. I know because I looked up who's Robert Jordan. Robert Robert Jordan did Wheel of Time. I get him and Brandon Sanderson like together mixed up, but George R. R. Martin. Brandon Sanderson did like the last two Wheel of Times. Three, I think, but yeah. He's so based. Uh, Guys, do you prefer cats or dogs? I've been thinking about this. Jacob, go first. Uh <laughs> 
I put you on the spot, didn't I? You kind of did. Like, it's a mixed yeah. opinion. Like, cats are cool, but I also like dogs. It's interesting because all of us have dogs, and none of us have cats. Yeah. My we don't. My parents don't have cats because my mom is allergic. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a main... similar I'm reason. I'm also very allergic to cats, but for this argument, I'm looking at it from an objective stance. So I will be ignoring my deficits. I would have both. Argument. No, you can't do both. Which one do you then... prefer? Even if it's just by like point zero 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 one. Probably dogs because they're just so big. Mm-hmm. I can see that. You can go. You can go. You can get them. You can get them like. Your entire like bed sized, yeah. Uh, Liam, what's your opinion? Hmm. Yeah. Honestly, so here's the thing about perspective: no matter how much bias you try to get rid of, you're always going to be biased. Yeah. So I can only answer this question operating on the knowledge I have and the information I have. I've owned dogs. I've never owned a cat. All right, but all most of the information I have seen is that cats can be pretty big jerks. I've seen cats that aren't, all right, and I've seen jerks, dogs that are jerks, all right? But it feels like more often than not, cats are kind of just more like independent, not, not necessarily jerks. It's more like cats are independent. So when humans try to like mess with them a lot, they're like, I don't like that. Whereas dogs are much more like friendlier, like they're always out to be playful and i think like if i had to choose one to be on my side i think a dog would be far more likely to be like a good friend than a cat would be you know so that's my opinion i I, i'd say dogs i see mainly for that reason and so to break the mold i've also had only dogs my whole life but i realized i really love cats i feel like they just like me for real for real uh but like (laughs) like uh cats you know how i like the more independent nature and also uh, both my do- one of my dogs, kind of a jerk. Like not always, but it, like spoiled. Yeah, dogs can easily fall under the. If you don't train them right, they're going to be like the worst yeah. thing possible. She's not the worst thing possible. It's just like I'm not. I'm not yeah. saying like your dog in particular, but I'm like I'm more talking about like. The well, I can go with cats pitbull. too. Oh uh, yeah, but that's like any big dog. Like the same with untrained German Shepherd, because like yeah, uh, but cats like they can also just be assholes but that's like a generalized statement like i think honestly i call it garfield syndrome it's kind of garfieldified so like a lot of people's perspective if they don't have cats it's like garfield but then you yeah, go I've look at the cat garfield photos as well really is yeah. that is that an actual thing or are you just like supporting me uh i'm I'll always supporting support you, your Jackson. statement and i was making a bit out of it what bit no, 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 we said no more gaslighting. Sorry, I was talking about how we should stop gaslighting. And then people started gaslighting me, me that there is no gaslighting bit. <laughs> and for a moment, I considered agreeing with everybody and just continuing that. And then I realized that would only perpetuate the issue in a different way. <laughs> We're forever trapped. No, I think it's just we need to like stop. I, I've been better. I haven't gaslit that much today. I didn't go into the VC oh, and immediately crazy. gaslight, but back back on topic about cats. That's crazy. I'm a I I realized like I'm a huge cat fan, so I um yeah. And whenever I walk home from like studying in certain places, I like to take a specific path. That there's this cat at a certain building that he's there like twenty four seven. No, no, he's there like five to six p.m. or like like around sunsetish times, and he's just napping there. And I like to go past and just see him there every day. I I always take the path around that time just so just for the chance to see him. And I realized I wouldn't do that to my dogs because I love them, but they're boring. All they do is like sit there and sleep. And I think this cat's cuter than them. So I realized I'm kind of cat pilled. You know, I'm a cat cell. Mm-hmm. But I'm not cat a furry. Pilled, more like blue pilled. Okay, okay, okay. Red you know, pilled, you, dog you, pilled. You know. Okay, all right. Yeah, I agree, Jacob. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, it's 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 just like generally, like I think for me, it's a close call. Like if I could have both, I would have both. Yeah, and I'll probably have both later. That's not either that or I'll have some like random like animal, like a frog or something. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, you're a big frog head. You're a big frog cell, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Slippy's your favorite Star Fox character. I've never played Star Fox. But, but yeah. he's your favorite. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You he... haven't played Star Fox? No, I have not played Star Fox. Me neither. Yeah, I was about to say, who here has? I'm sorry, all you Star Fox fans. They're like three games and like half of them are bad. I like to just say things with other surprise to inject some enthusiasm into conversation, you know? You haven't gone to the moon? What? Exactly. Yeah, Neither have I. He hasn't, I. Gone, to he hasn't crazy. gone to the moon either. I haven't either. Oh, Mario Odyssey. Wait, I yeah. have been to the moon. Shit. I haven't I been have... to the darker side. I haven't played Mario Odyssey, but I'm I've been to the moon. Ass at games. Hold on. I'm pulling up back at my topic list because I know. We have a friend. He likes Mario Odyssey. Um, I'm ass at platformers. Are there any games where you guys are just like kind of not good at? I'm good at all of them. It's actually really hard to say because, like, I'm I'm pretty good at most at most games that I play. This may sound I'm I'm bad at games where you have to like think about actions. Like, if I were to play chess, it'd be so bad at like if I were to show you guys my games, mm -hmm. like I'd be in so low elo. Yeah, you'd be, be like five hundred forty eight. No, 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 it's just because thinking of, it, thinking I... of all everything and like <laughs> considering all the different possibilities at once and like having to like really think through what that's just hard for me you know i like just like sl... oh jeez i like slamming my head against the wall and just slowly getting better now, now that i say that out loud it doesn't i don't feel great about that it works but not in chess that's like a that's like a, a rep game, like platformers. You're you're a platformer head. You you like I, I love platformers. I love platformers. Yeah, that's. I a... think I think the worst that is in like competitive strategy games because like, similarly, I bash my head against the wall, but not in like thinking about what can happen, but more because I like to do unorthodox play styles. Yeah, you kind of get like uh, what's it, like tunnel vision on like the funny strats. Yeah, I I get tunnel vision. I'm like, oh, this this like. Like, for instance, I don't know, like, Magic the Gathering. Oh, these people with hats are funny. I'll just do hats and, like, ignore, like, the meta with viable cards or whatnot, you know? Yeah, no, you get so fucked in, like, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu -Gi yeah. <laughs> uh, what, how are you both as RPG heads? I like RPGs. You know, but are you I good used at to them? not like them at I'm all. I'm good at RPGs. Okay. I used to not like them at all. But you know they slowly grew on me. Mm -hmm. I think I think Persona Five was the first RPG I played that was like, oh wow, I love this game. And then and then someone got me into Xenoblade games, you which were also me. pretty good. Had a lot of fun with those. Oh my god, not to date this recording, but they just dropped the Xenoblade Three Future Redeemed trailer a few days ago, and holy shit! I why did they have to do it now? Why couldn't they have like pushed it back a week? I I wouldn't I'm gonna be busy. I think I'm still gonna play a bit of it, even though I shouldn't. <laughs> so true. Yeah, but I'm absolute ass at platformers. Uh I remember the first time I played Shovel Knight, like I was at a friend's house and it was so oh terrible. I like I'm I'm no more good at platformers, but so like the first time I played the um uh, the second expansion, the uh, the Plague Knight one, I skipped through the dialogue at the very beginning oh my God. of the first level. So I like sat there for like ten minutes, not knowing what to do to get over like the, the simple basic jump. Oh, you pulled an IGN Cuphead moment, but not as bad. Not as bad. But it was like for ten minutes, like okay, I'm doing something wrong. Let's just reload the game. And then I read the cutscene. I'm like, damn it, I'm such a fucking idiot. And it was all over. I love platformers. Yeah, I'm terrible. Like Celeste, it, uh, I, I, that was very hard, and it's a hard game. And I would, I want to like play more of it, but it would, it takes so much time, and it's like so much of. I don't get very angry, especially at games. Like, and I don't get angry at Celeste, but I get like frustrated to a point where I need to cool down, and so like. I just can't play it in super long sittings.
I think the DLC of Celeste nearly gave me Carpal Tunnel. Oh yeah, like do, high <laughs> input games like that. I'm so bad at. I'm bad at. Also, fighting Celeste games. is my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite games of all time. I really liked it despite being bad at it, which is like that's a good that's a testament to its strat quality. But like, I'm bad at platformers no matter the dimension. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus, which, to be fair, that game it controls like you're like you're on a drunk horse, which I would not doubt that the horse is drunk half the time. But like, Wander is oh my god, he has the coordination of like an ox. But. I got on the final, I was playing it on a friend's console, and I got to the final Colossus, and I got, like, to the top, and I fell off. And it took me 30 minutes to get to the top, mind you. No, it took me 20 minutes to get to the top, and so when I fell off, I then had to go and uh, climb all the way back up, and it took me, like, another 20 minutes. Overall, I think it took me 40-something minutes to beat that boss, and it's not a hard boss. I'm just bad. That is unfortunate. And the whole time, one of our friends is just making fun of me. And I'm like, no, you're right. I, I wish I could be like, nope, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. How's How it? was Velcro invented? Isn't it? Mean, isn't Velcro weird? Oh, I Hold on one sec. Talk about on the... You guys continue the conversation. I mean, I, I know a good platformer that Mario? It doesn't require much skill to play. No pizza tower. I you, that you, it doesn't look like a game I would like. Ah, uh, damn. I'm not going I'm to play pizza tower. So, anyways, isn't Velcro weird? It's like just a bunch of like sticky uppy things, but then they stick together. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, looking at it, it's like a really smart thing. I would have. There was probably large versions of Velcro. Until they're like, oh shit, what if we made this smaller and had the ability to make it smaller and like a better material? Because like, mm -hmm. if you think about it, it's just like, you know, the spiny things you find in the grass. But then I you hate apply those. it to I be hate useful. Those. Like, isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Like, I think Velcro is a very logical invention and it's dope that they did it. I'm a big Velcro head. Like, I don't like tying my shoes because it's frustrating. And also, I wear boots, like, half the time. And then I have to, like, lace them all up. And then my boots have a buckle on them. So then I have to, like, put the buckle in. It's a whole process. But, like, there are days where I just don't wear my boots because of that. Or, like, I'll just go, fuck it, we're putting slippers on and walking out with sandals or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Velcro is based because I don't have to tie my shoes with Velcro. The only downside is it deteriorates after a while, which, hey, that happens to shoelaces. Shoe laces. Stop slurring your words, idiot. But you can just uh, replace it later on. And I, I don't know if the same is for Velcro. Mm -hmm. But Velcro is a, a good invention, in my opinion. Uh... Anybody, anybody else have anything they're going to say before I take this somewhere else? I hate that diseases are tiny. They're cowards. They're cowards for being that small. I like, mean, when something infects my body, it's so annoying because it doesn't want to take me in a fight. I wish they were the size of, like, a bear so then I could just, like, grapple it and beat it the heck out without having to rely on my inner systems to have to deal with the, di the disease, you know? You know, diseases are kind of like the Pokemon versus lions debate. Like, you yourself, like, imagine, like, you could just take the diseases if there are, like, three of them. But yeah. because there's, like, millions of them, then they can take you. Yeah. So it's, like, one billion is a lot of lions, and I don't think everybody realizes that. This is true. Uh, but yeah. how? But, okay, hold on. I think no. I could take every disease if they oh, were all the size of bears. With with the Pokemon debate, you have to think about how like the objective power of like a bunch of them. Like you, you literally have Pokemon in there that manipulate space and time. To, to, like they could, they can literally just say, "Hey, lions, 
go back to like fetal forms and like de-age them out of existence they can't though because they don't ever show the ability to do that so they they say that palkia has space time travel but they, palkia never truly manipulates time to such a degree and neither of them have like a very high level of intelligence especially compared to other pokemon like mm -hmm. in the movies that when you see them all they're just rampaging and like oh no why doesn't palkia just distort dialga in like into nothingness why doesn't dialga just rend palkia in two mm -hmm. and the answer is because they're not all powerful like what? crazy well, divine what beings reloading? they're just hold on okay they're oh. just <laughs> reptiles with a bit of spunk Yeah. Yeah, they're just a bunch of crazy reptiles. Yeah, yeah they're like, they're not, they don't have all encompassing powers. And like, because I see, when I see Pikachu beat a legendary, I'm like, you're not that powerful. Yeah. And there's so many inconsistencies in the, like, the way that different media represents Pokemon. There's no objective power unless like you are talking to one lead designer at Pokemon about them. Mm -hmm. But like even God, I can just put him in a ball sometimes. God's the only person that has shown time travel. But he's also amongst like the Pokemon there. I know. Or, like, well, I still think they could kill him. But a uh, true Celebi does, but Celebi's also like very limited time travel. I Celebi seems to only have the ability to put people back in time. Yeah, they or, like, just board. put the lions yeah. back in time to when they don't. Well, then they can just fucking make more lions. Well, what yeah, if they they'll just Celebi will just send the lions back in time to when the Earth wasn't hospitable. Celebi has not shown that ability to do so, and I don't think Celebi can do large amounts of that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And also, Celebi's like a little onion boy. Like, all they need to do is a lion ladder onto it. Like, one chomp from a lion, dead. <laughs> lion ladder? You don't know about the lion ladder? I don't know about the lion ladder. Well, so the lion ladder is when the lions stack up on each other to uh, reach another, uh, a flying Pokemon. Mm hmm. And when, when has the lions been shown to be able to do this? History. So have you seen World War Z? I've seen World War Z. So you know how the zombies just like pile on each other and they like to climb up mm -hmm. walls? It's the same thing except lions are smarter than the zombies in World War Z. I guess. If are Celebi they? can uh, transport people back to the part of the universe where there's nothing, lions can stack on top of each other. I mean, it's. I think it's just simple. Like, I think the only person, only Pokemon that really like poses a threat to them is either Necrozma or Arceus. And like, what Arceus's great feat of power is time travel and creating the smartphone. Like humanity's done one of those already, and I think enough a one billion is a lot of lions, and I still think they can take him. Create the smartphone. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Oh. He did. That's how he opens the game. He gives you a fucking smartphone. That's his own, like... Like, you know, periodically through the game when God will text you? <laughs> Based. I should have played Legends Arceus. It's funny. I liked that game. It was much more fun. It much, good. Yeah, it's much more fun than a lot of others. Better than Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet's ass. I hate that game. Like, uh, mechanically, Scarlet and Violet is pretty good, but, like presentation wise graphically i think also the open world. presentation is worse than sword and shield it's worse than sword and shield i i went and i reopened sword and shield the other day uh because i was debating doing a nuzlocke and i saw it looked better than scarlet and violet i'm like what the fuck how do you regress character regression they should just go back to pixel art <laughs> I know it's way more Dude, work, but it's better. I, I saw this one where it was like a remake of one of the original Pokemon games, but like in the set the of Octopath, like Octopath yeah. Traveler with like all the shadows and stuff. Yeah, that, was cool. I saw that. I saw somebody tweet like they would kill for that, and I agree. But I actually, I'm not the biggest fan of the Octopath like graphic style. I don't like the filter they have over it. What? I've been playing oh, uh, Pokemon Emerald Rogue, and it's just made me realize how much I miss. Uh, 
normal pixel art especially mm -hmm. old pokemon pixel art like watching how they redid a lot of the sprites i think nintendo and the pokemon company are just lazy as fuck because if these mod developers are making better sprites than you guys, or even better, these are your Pokemon. If you're going to, like, do what you do and be an asshole and stop people from modding, you should just go download it and steal the sprites and then just put them in your game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is your creative content. Anyway. Yeah, instead of using the same sprites that you have been using since the fucking Pokemon Pokedex on the fucking 3DS... Agreed. You can spare agree. some time to do something a little bit different. They've been reusing the same models, unless when they make new Pokemon, obviously. And it's like, come on, guys. The fuck? If they make new Pokemon. The new Pokemon don't look like animals. Or like anything like normal. Ah, I think for the most part, the new Pokemon have been fine. Like, uh... Most I, of them. I think Scarlet and Violet like, had some banger new Pokemon. Yeah, there are some good ones in there. Some of them just, like, are a bit wacky, though. Well, yeah. After, like, a, a thousand Pokemon, you're going to get a bit wacky. Brute. I, I think it's perfectly fine. Like, I know you're... I, I think you're referring to, like, the new Pokemon that they dropped and we were discussing in our Discord server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that think that's an outlier in Scarlet and Violet. I think yeah. for the most part, all the rest of the Pokemon are way better. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Iron Valiant, base design. Uh, what's his name? I use him in Showdown. He's the. Is it? He's the guy with Iron the fire Fist? sword. No, Iron Fist is. I don't like Iron Fist. I think that's. I think a lot of the Iron Pokemon are actually kind of bad, or like mid and uncreative. It's not Iron Fist. It's the. Uh, Sarah Ledge. I think Sarah Ledge banger. Those two top two Pokemon designs. Like Blue Fire, that that's got me. That's Sarah Ledge gives me more ag vibes. And that's always good. Blue Fire is fun. Um, uh, let's see. I know I know I recognize that name. I'm not as Xenoblade. Uh she is the Wait, the yeah, lady. Yeah, I know which one it is, yeah. Yeah, she's the hot lady with the two swords mm -hmm. black hair military outfit yeah, she's yeah, fast I, I wish they would bring back mega evolution that was some of the coolest stuff they've done i loved mega evolution i agree maybe I, because the designs were so cool oh i half agree you know i'm gonna be real some of the megas kind of too powerful uh mega kangaskhan is crazy if they like properly balanced it well and... I, the problem is now it's too late because oh we're all the megas are back except mega kangaskhan you're like oh what are you doing but i do like how they made some obsolete things such as beedrill uh, not gengar gengar has been competitively to be viable for like every generation uh, you know what i think would be a good bet hmm. if like suddenly like like minutes before a tournament they suddenly announced oh by the way every single pokemon gimmick is now uh tournament legal like, like all gimmick them. oh like all of the like mega evolution z moves how would they do that they would have to be in the game my my gigantamax z move mega in. evolution <laughs> charizard <laughs> wait i i think gigantamax <laughs> would cancel <laughs> out but wait no terra type gigantamax Char charizard kind of goes crazy <laughs> oh don't give them that idea I know in singles, Dynamax was bad. And also, Dynamax was kind of difficult in VGC because it's like, if you Dynamax first, you're kind of boned. Boned. Yeah. You're and kind of boned. You also had, like, some Pokemon where they were only viable Dynamaxing, so you had to, like, your teams were weird. Yeah. I know Terrestrializing is way better because, like, I've been playing Ranbats in Showdown, and you can just Terra based on whatever. Although some of the Terras they give you are your little weird weird i've been wanting to get like into vgc but i don't support scarlet and violet i don't like the game and i don't want an ev and all of that especially because xenoblade's coming around the corner i want to play a little more final fantasy uh what other i i want to play final fantasy 7 intergrade i have it i have it downloaded i just have not played it mm-hmm 
the remake, obviously. Um, no, you should play the original. I so. tried playing the original. I did not like it. it. I don't think that was a game that aged well, which, hey, that's how it be sometimes. You can't win them all. Mm, let's see. Now that... Let's see. So, it's kind of getting towards the end of the... Well, end of the school year. How's everybody's school life going? I cannot wait for it to be over. Uh, it's going fine. I really need to work on some assignments that are, like... Not due, but, like... Well, one of them is a test I need to get prepared for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the other one's like an art project. Yeah, I, I have. Like, have I have like no like motivation for whatsoever. But which is the sad it. part. Yeah, that's how projects be. I have two assignments. My last day of classes is tomorrow, and then I just have to study for three exams, and I'm done. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not looking forward to studying. I'm not either, especially because oh, right. one of my essays is one of my assignments is an essay and it's like four pages and i've not started and it's it's due thursday which is a while but i still have to do it and then i have a test thursday so i need to like finish that and then start studying because my tests are like thursday and then two of them on saturday i just remembered i need to read a book for one of my english classes you should do that you know reading's based i'm a i'm a what's the word fan of reading Oh, you Me can't too. do that now. Sorry. I was uh, being, what's the word, weird? Oh, yeah. You've been reading, uh, what is it, Brandon Sanderson books, or like slowly starting on Mistborn. I get, yeah, I, I've, been, hmm? I've been a little slow, unfortunately. But I think once I have you've more been time. reading at a normal person pace. I When I talk to like other people, like maybe a little slower, but like whenever you do read, you read like at a normal pace. I read like a ravenous monster. So you should never compare your reading to mine. You, you I, pointed I, at your books in your shelf later when I saw you, and it was a lot. You said you all started this semester? Uh, no, so I, I got them this semester. I have only finished three of them. Oh. Uh, but So those are big books. Oh, yeah, no, that's like the general size I read. But it's just, I read, that's my, like my thing. People are like, oh, I played this game for 30 hours. I'll be like, I sat there and read for 20 hours, which I did. When I was going on vacation, I had six books on me. They were all about like 400 to 500 pages. I read the whole series in five days, counting the plane ride. Damn. Which I need to find more time to read. I mean, some people, I think you just enjoy other things way more than reading, and it's just not worth your time. I, I've uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you're not that big of a story head. You're wrong. Really? Yes. I, re I really like, you know, getting into the story and stuff. Okay. I just feel like I'm a massive story head because all the games I play are, like, story-based. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I, like, play, all, like, all story-based, but whatever I see, like... Even like whenever there is one, there's more hard, like more likely that I'll probably play for longer. Or when if I actually have time to play it on my own, I will. Like I, when I played Disco Elysium, I played that only that game mm -hmm. till I finish it. Yeah, I just because feel like was... that's like all I look for. Because like my three favorite games, or like my favorite series, is all heavily story based. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of stories, big or small. I like Celeste's story, yeah. even though that's not nearly the focus. Yeah, but I appreciate it being there. Yeah, no, that's what I. So that's what I really like about stories. It's not like the overt what they show. Like I'm not here for like all the funny moments and like the ha ha's and like the cool things. I'm here for like I love how what Celeste says about like anxiety and depression. It's it's very yeah. good, and I like how they present it because it's like. It's not like, oh, right on your face, but it's like, it's like just, it's not super obscure and hidden, but uh -huh. it is, uh, it's like presented in a way that's like an allegory metaphor, you know, split in two selves, spoilers for Celeste. 
technically. Uh, but I really like how they present it. Like, not it's not about like the over. It's literally just like the general like journey archetype, and it's like the destination is not what matters. It's the journey. Blah blah blah. Yeah, he's trying to do the as well. So true. So true. But like I I like sitting there and like looking at a book and then looking at the themes of the book and like the different elements the authors use and motifs they use to represent yeah. the themes, especially yeah. in games. Like uh big fan of that in Xenoblade. I just like powerful character moments and like seeing a character I can get attached to and watching them grow over oh, time. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with like character arcs and stuff. I love those. Th those are some of my favorite stuff in stories. Like whenever I get into like a story I like actually care about and like, I want to see happen, it will be like the one thing I do for like the end of time until I finish it. Like how I'm speeding through one piece. I guess that was the well, that's the thing. I don't, I think I don't. Know. I like to take my time and analyze it, and that's what I mean. It's not like that's yeah, what I, I mean by I'm a story that. head. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think there's like appreciating and liking the story, and then like me, I'm a big story head. Where I, I, <laughs> I can't believe I keep using that fucking term. But story I, head? yeah, I, I sit there and like I. I'm not rushing through it. Like, when I played Xenoblade 3, yeah, I had pulled, like, multiple all-nighters, like, to get to the end. But I, like, took my time, and I did not rush. And, like, I slowly did there. And I, like, mm -hmm. after some of the big moments, I sat and, like, looked at it and made some connections. And I think that's what I mean by, like, being super big into stories. Because, like, I feel like that's a big, a universal condition. I've never found somebody who doesn't love a good story. Yeah. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff I love that I feel like I feel like I, I have a need to like go through some of the stuff I really like as fast as I can. When and then I'll always do that and I'll look back and just feel like I really wish I could have taken my time. Cause as much as I love stories, there's a lot of stuff in stories that I don't notice that I wish I could have like taken my time to like think about what's going on. That happened a lot of me. Like in the Xenoblade games, I feel like I wish I could have just like slowed down and like to really think about what had happened instead of just going through it. I feel like it would have made me appreciate more and that's a skill I wish I could like get a bit better yeah. at. That's something I want to practice on. I also, yeah, I think I, I, I sometimes like to take it slow, but I also really like, as you said, like finding connections as well whenever I watch anything or like callbacks or like references to like earlier points. Yeah, I think, like, the callbacks and reference, that's, like, always fun when they're, like, you know they're paying attention, but it's, like, I, for me, that's, like, a bare minimum for a good story, yeah. yeah but I feel yeah. like that skill, yeah, it's a good one, and I know a lot of people shit on English class, but, like, that's where you develop that skill, and I feel like a lot of people are missing it because they just fuck their way through English and, like, oh, I spark notes, <laughs> instead of, like, me. sitting there and reading it. <laughs> It's just the way it was pre presented. I didn't care about it. But yeah. now that I'm actually uh, like interacting with stuff I really care about, then I wish I could have developed those skills more. Yeah, that's a th like if you can do it with something you dislike, like a depend, like you're forced to read English book, then you can do it with something you like, and you'll just passively do it eventually. Yeah. And, you know, well, I think with that, I think that's a good place to call it quits. Do you two have any closing remarks? See you later, baking monkeys. Well, yeah, you heard him. See you later, bakerinos. And remember, preheat the oven, yes. Don't forget to preheat the oven. Why do they